The solid today that we're going to look at is the cone. So recall that to create a cone, we rotate a right triangle about one of the legs. So let's sketch a right triangle. So we have the two legs that form the right angle and the hypotenuse. So the solid, so for vocab, the apex or vertex, which was mentioned in the reading, is there at the top. We have our base. So I'm going to shade the base in this light blue. So here's the base of the solid. And as a net to the right, this would be our base. So the base is a circle. And then this lateral surface in pink is this triangular shape. And remember, I have the nets in the back of the classroom that you can play with. Um, that curves, right? The bottom part of this triangular two-dimensional figure goes around the edge of our base, OK? And then we have the slant height. OK, so remember the slant height. When we draw, look at the height of the solid and the radius of a circle. This height that is at a slant is called the slant height. And the altitude or height with the radius in slant height forms a right triangle. OK? And the next part of this table, it says a cone inside a cylinder with the same base area and height takes up one third the volume of the cylinder. So the volume on your reference sheet is one third pi r squared times h. Now this pi r squared is the base area where this h or height is the height of the solid. In this case, the cone. OK? So to the left, let's investigate or talk more about this lateral surface. OK, that would be this triangular shape figure right here. Just like the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, so the area of a triangle, let's write that down, 1 half base times height, the area of this triangular shape, or like this sector, right, of a circle, okay, is going to be 1 half, but this base is curved. Remember, that has to curve around the base edge of a circle. So that distance around a circle is circumference, or 2 pi r. And then the height of that triangular uh, figure is the slant height. Okay, And that slant height can be drawn anywhere. It's all the same. So from that vertex to the base edge, it's all the slant height, which we know with the letter L. Okay, so our lateral area, okay, we use L, is just pi r L because when we do one half times two, that's just one pi r L or just pi r L. And the surface area, we take that lateral area. and add the base area. So as a formula, you don't have to memorize it. Okay, The lateral surface area is pi r l. And then the base area, the base is a circle, and the area of a circle is pi r squared, which is on your reference sheet. So let's take a look at 1 and 2 at the bottom. The one on the left, uh, we're going to find the volume in terms of pi. And the one on the right, we're going to find the volume to the nearest tenth. So in terms of pi is an exact answer. 
So in looking at the cone, we're given the slant height and the diameter of the base. So for volume, if we write the formula, one third pi r squared times h. I need the height or the altitude, which is drawn from the vertex perpendicular to the base. And I want to look at this right triangle. Okay? The point of intersection, in this case of the diameter and height, okay, it's a that's a midpoint of the diameter, so it does hit the center. So half of 32, this would be 16. So we want to ask ourselves, um, is it a triple? Okay, or do we need to do the Pythagorean theorem to find h? So if I wanted to use Pythagorean theorem, that would be equal to the square root. Again, I'm setting it up to avoid the positive and negative of 34 squared minus 16 squared. Or it is a triple. It's a multiple of the 8, 15, whoops, 17. My pen just had an error. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so 16 is 8 times 2. 34 is 17 times 2. So 15 times 2 would give us a height of 30. So now we can plug everything in. I've got the radius and I've got the height. So the volume equals 1 third pi r squared times h, or the height. Okay, 16 squared is 256, 1 third of 30 is 10, so 10 times 256 pi is 2,560 pi. And then our unit, remember for volume, is cubic units, so we're in terms of yards, yards cubed. Okay. To the right, again, we're going to find volume, and this time we are given the altitude. We're given the altitude and this angle that's formed by the slant height and altitude of 18 degrees. What we're missing, though, is the radius. So given the angle on a side, I am going to, because this is a right triangle, I am going to use trig. So according to the angle, uh, well, first, we don't have the hypotenuse, right? We have a side opposite and adjacent, so we're going to use tangent. So the tangent of 18 equals opposite r over adjacent side 11.5. So to solve this equation for r, we're first going to multiply both sides by 11.5. So doing this on the calculator, um, we're going to get um, a non-terminating decimal. So let's leave it exact. So the radius equals 11.5 tangent of 18 degrees. So now I can make that substitution into the volume formula. So once again, volume is one-third pi times the radius, in this case 11.5 tangent of 18, squared times our height, which is 11.5. Type that whole line into the calculator, and we get 168. 0.1412285 to the nearest tenth. The volume is approximately 168.1 cubic centimeters. Okay, on the back side. Number three, it says the volume of a right circular cone is 21 pi and the altitude is 7. What is the diameter? Well, the volume formula, I'm going to always write that down first, is 1 third pi r squared h. So using a volume of 21 pi and um, the height of 7, so 1 third pi r squared times 7, We'll be able to solve for the radius, okay? So we're going to solve for r and then just double it. So on the right side, 
Um, we've got 21 pi equals 1 third times pi r squared times 7. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3. In doing that, that'll get rid of the 1 third. And then we end up with 63 pi equals 7. I'm going to put the 7 first, 7 pi r squared. Divide both sides by 7 pi. Okay, we're going to have r squared equals, the pi's cancel out, and 63 divided by 7 is 9. Take the square root, and we have a radius of 3 and negative 3. We can't have a negative radius, so we're going to reject that. And if the radius is 3, the diameter is going to be double 3, which is 6. We don't have a unit, so I'm just going to put 6 units. Last one, and then we're going to take a look at a pyramid. What is the lateral surface area of a cone? So the formula is pi r l. With a diameter of, so we have a diameter of 14 millimeters and a height of 24. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So the diameter is 14. We have a radius of 7. The height, remember, I don't need the height. I need the slant height. So I'm going to do my best to sketch cone. Okay, let's bring it up here, here. We have a radius of 7 and a height of 24. Remember, the radius is perpendicular to the height. And then the slant height, well, this is a Pythagorean triple. It's the 7, 24, 25. So now I'm all set. So the lateral area is pi times a radius of 7 times the slant height of 25. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so type that all into your calculator, and we get 549.7787144. To the nearest tenth, we have a lateral area of about 549.8 square millimeters. All right, now to the pyramid. The pyramid is very similar to the cone in that they both have a vertex, right? And they have a slant height, they have a lateral face, a lateral surface, an altitude, and the base. So this base area here is here. Our lateral surfaces for the pyramid are triangles. Okay, we're going to have four triangles in this case because the base is a rectangle. It might be a square. Uh, so here's our lateral surface as a net. And then I just want to highlight that with, okay, not a radius, but with this distance here, the altitude and the slant height, we have a right triangle. Okay? One thing that's not noted here is uh, those segments, which are the base edges. Okay? So, typically the solids, right? Uh, typically the solids have a, uh, the little name the base. It can be a pentagonal pyramid, hexagonal pyramid, square base, rectangular base. Um, but the triangles, all of these triangles, because our lateral edges are all the same measure, okay, all of the triangles are going to be isosceles triangles. Okay, so four congruent isosceles triangles make up the lateral surface. Uh, of a right pyramid, the base of this triangle equals to the length of a, so the base of this triangle equals to the length of the, oh, the, I was reading that, funny, it didn't sound right. So the base of the triangle right here, right, um, equals or is the same as the length of a base edge, so whatever our base edges are of the pyramid. So the base of the triangle is the same as the base edge of the solid. The height of this triangle is equal to the, so the height of these triangles, so this height 
that height, that height, and that height is actually the slant height, right, because those triangles are at a slant. So it's the slant height of the pyramid or the solid. Its volume, right, if the prism had the same base area as the pyramid and the same height, it takes up, the pyramid does one third that of the prism. So the volume is one third capital B times H, and this capital B stands for the base area because in a pyramid, the base can change. It's not always a circle like the cone. It can be a pentagon, a pentagonal pyramid. It can be a hexagon for a hexagonal pyramid. Um, so it's, it's represented just with a capital B, which is noted here in black at the bottom. And we're going to use L to once again note the lateral area. So our lateral surface area, right, is going to be four times the area of one of those triangles because all the triangles are congruent. It's going to be four times the area of a triangle. Okay? So given n triangles, so it's going to be one half. Now, whatever this base edge is, so over here, they're representing the base edge with an S. So there's the base times the height, we're still going to note that with slant height. So one half, right, of base, that's an S, um, times our slant height, and then times four, because there's four triangles. So given any number of triangles, if it's a hexagonal, we'll have six triangles. If it's a pentagonal, five. The lateral surface area is um, N times one half S times L because the number of triangles can change. And then again, just generally, surface area is lateral area plus base area. So let's do a few practice with the pyramid. Number five through six. So the two examples here, find the volume of the pyramids. Uh, the first one didn't tell us to round, so that needs to be exact. Or the second one says to find it to the nearest tenth. So looking up at the... Um, square pyramid, because it's 12 by 12, so this is a square. And then we have a slant height of 10. Now volume is one third capital B times H. Well, we have enough for that base area. So whether it be a rectangle or a square, in this case a square, it's just length times width for 12 squared. What we don't have is the height of the pyramid. So I'm going to draw it straight down. And remember, we connect it to the point of intersection of the slant height and our base edge. We have a right triangle. Okay? If this whole side is 12, then this is 6. And it is a triple. It's the 6 what 10? Triple 6, 8, 10. So our altitude is 8. So typing that into the calculator, one third of 12 squared times eight. Our final answer is 384, and it's gonna be cubic inches, because inches is our unit. And then the volume of the um, pentagonal pyramid in this case, okay? So volume, once again, is one third capital B times H. So we need to focus on the area of the pentagon. And not only is it a pentagon, but it's noted that all sides are the same. Therefore, it's the or it's a regular pentagon. So let's start with the area of the base, which is a regular pentagon. Okay. So the process was, back in the unit, was to break this pentagon up into triangles. So I'm going to draw this triangle down below. Okay? What I know is that this height of the triangle is 3. And to find the area of that, I need the base. So this I need to know. I do know if these are isosceles that the altitude bisects the base, so I can call this x and this x. 
And then what else do I know? Well, here at the circle, right here at the center rather, we have all these angles that make one full circle, which is 360 degrees. So if we divide 360 by 5, that gives us 72. But this altitude is going to bisect the 72 degree angle, and we're going to have 36 and 36. So to find x, we're going to have to use trigonometry. So we don't have the hypotenuse, so that's tangent of 36 degrees equals x over 3, opposite to adjacent. So times 3 times 3. And x equals 3 tangent of 36 degrees. Now, if I want all the way across, right, it's going to be this times 2. So I can rewrite this, okay, so the base, rather, not 2x, but the base of the triangle is 6 tan of 36, okay? So let's go back to the area of the base, or regular pentagon. So the area of the pentagon is going to be 5 times the area of a triangle. So 5 times, all right, the area of a triangle is 1 half of the base. So 1 half of 6 tan 36, right, times the height. The height of the triangle is 3. Um, so that's going to give us the area of the pentagon. So multiplying all the numbers, like 5 times 1 half times 36 times 3, that gives us 45 tangent of 36 degrees. And that's exact. So the area of the pentagon is the capital B in 1 half or sorry, one-third area of the base times height. So again, volume equals one-third capital B times H. Now the height, the height of this solid is right here, which is 12. So it's going to be, for the volume, one-third of 45 tangent of 36 degrees times 12. Type that whole line in the calculator, we get 130.777655. So the volume running to the nearest tenth is 130.8 cubic centimeters. All right, let's finish with 7 and 8. Find the number of inches in the altitude of a pyramid whose volume is 500 and whose base is 50 square inches. Now, whose base is 50 square inches, that's telling me that's the base area, okay? So let's write the formula first, and we'll substitute what we know, okay? So if the volume is 500, we're going to put that in for the B. So one third. Now, the base area is 50. So one-third of 50 times H, okay? So we can write this 500 equals 50H over 3. So we multiply both sides by 3. We get 1,500 equals 50H. Divide by 50, and our height is 30. So our answer is going to be 30 inches. All right, last one. Find the surface area. Okay. So the surface area is made up of four triangles in this case. And if it's a regular square pyramid, then plus a square. So let's find the area of one triangle. So the area of one triangle, let's use this one. Okay. So this is 10. If it's regular, this is 10. And what we're missing is the slant height. So let's look at, say, this right triangle. So this would be 5. Okay. 
and this is 5, and it's the, for a triple, it's the 5, what, 13? It's the 5, 12, 13. So the area of that triangle is going to be 1 half of 10 by 12. Okay? Well, 1 half of 12 is 6, and 6 times 10 is 60. Okay, so we have four triangles. So the surface area is going to be 4 times 60, because it's four triangles, plus our base area. And our base is a square. So let's see our square pyramid. If one side's 10, 10 times 10, so our base area is 10 times 10, which is 100. So we've got uh, 240 plus 100. Our total surface area is 340 inches squared.